Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Trevor Stockwell here, and I've got our guest Ray today, who brings a wealth of business and entrepreneurial experience with wisdom and success wrapped up in that. Before I introduce him further, let me just ask you this. How well are you leading your business and your team? How well are you leading yourself? These are crucial questions that we regularly need to review so that we optimize opportunities and we build a strong foundation for our businesses. I mean, that's what we all want, right? Well, you'll be pleased to know that Ray's here to help us sharpen these areas today. He co-founded the semiconductor company Michael back in 1978 and was the CEO there for 37 years until 2015. 36 of those years were very profitable, apart from one year which was partly down to the dot-com crash. So we can let him off for that one, can't we? It's an impressive track record, and I'm sure you'll agree that it takes a lot more than luck and coincidence to achieve this. Ray's passionate about helping entrepreneurs and business owners, which is why he's with us today. And he's going to tell us more about how to do that in a moment. But also, just wanted to mention he's the author of the book, Tough Things First, and he hosts a podcast with the same name. And he's also the founder of the Zin Starter Program, which gives financial mentoring support for students to help them launch new products and companies. There's lots more I could say about him, but you get the picture. He's a very special guy. So welcome to the show, Ray Zinn. Glad to have you with us. Well, thank you, Trevor. I'm so happy to be here. Lots of things I want to um, talk to you about, so we'll dive in very shortly. First of all, maybe just how did your journey start into entrepreneurship? Okay, so... um... My father was an independent businessman. Uh, he was a cattle rancher down in the, what they call the southern part of California uh, in the Imperial Valley, which is in between San Diego and Yuma, Arizona. Uh, and so my dad being an entrepreneur and an independent businessman, I, I really you know, gained a love and appreciation for what, what it took to be an entrepreneur. Um, I liken it to... Um, as, as, as you would, as an example, you know, falling off of a cliff and clawing at the face of the cliff until you get back to safety. Uh, if you can just picture that, that that's what, what it's like to be an entrepreneur. Um, it, it's, it's not with, you know, without having, you know, difficulties to, to achieve success, you got to claw your way to success. Yeah. Um, and, and, and if you don't keep clawing away at that face of that mountain, uh, or that cliff as you fall, you're going to end up at the bottom. And uh, unless you want to end up at the bottom, you better keep clawing away. And you can imagine your fingers may be down to a stub, bleeding stub, but but you're you're still going at it. You're still trying. You're persevering. You're struggling. You're, you're just not giving up. You know, you you have that what we call mental toughness, mental toughness. You yeah. know, you just you not you just have the eye of the tiger. You know, you're just not going to give up. You're going to stick with it, uh, and and you know not become discouraged because discouragement will, is is really what what will defeat you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can yeah we can all um, <laughs> relate to yeah trying to claw up a cliff several different times. Yes, no, I know exactly what you mean. So I can give you that. I can give you the the the, uh, the term aha moment. You ever heard that term aha moment? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, I had invented the wafer stepper, which is a very important piece of equipment for the semiconductor industry. And uh, but it was causing a great deal of hardship on the company that I was working for back in 1974 is when I started developing that that product. Mm -hmm. Um, And by the way, it's still probably one of the most important piece of equipment that's currently in use in the manufacture of these small little uh, electronic devices that fit in our cell our cell phones and our computers yeah. and many other electronic devices. Uh, and so it was very important. It's a very important product. Um, I actually brought it to the, to the company, uh, to the one I was working for, because I was just trying to get introduced to a large company called Texas Instruments. 
Uh, and so that's is it, by the way, it's, it's all this is in my book, Tough Things First, the mm. story of this. So I won't spend a lot of time on it. But my uh, uh, my boss really told me, he says, can we go to lunch? I said, sure. So I was, I was down in, in uh, L.A., Los Angeles, California, visiting the, the, the company. Um, I was living in the Bay Area. So, you know, it's a it's a, about a, an hour plane ride down to, to L.A. And so I went to lunch and he looked at me and he, he says, you know, you really shouldn't work. For a big company you should you should be on your own you don't you just don't have the you know the, the the kind of characteristics that 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 really people who work for a company need to have and and i was kind of taken back by that you know and, and shaking my head and he says you know you shouldn't work for anybody but yourself and he paid the bill and then we went back to the office and uh i said oh so what does that mean he says it means you're fired <laughs> all right. right so i was wondering whether it was a positive thing or not that he was saying how how would you perceived it until he told you that you were fired i, I kind of got the drift that that i was probably not going to be long with the company okay uh, so I, I i flew back home uh, i'll never forget i flew back home that's you know caught the airplane right after that meeting and flew back to my home and uh um drove from the airport to my house and then walked upstairs. My wife was always there standing, waiting for me to come home. She was at the top of the stairs as I climbed up from the garage and, uh, and she gave me a hug and a kiss. And she's, and I said, I'm not going to work for anybody ever again. Those are the first words out of my mouth. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And, and then from, from, from mid 1976 until I, you know, from then on, from, from middle of 1976, I have never worked for anybody except myself. Uh, so I'm the only one that had ever signed my paycheck since 1976, which is probably longer than, than most of uh, I, don't, I don't know when you were born, Trevor, but I think it was maybe before or shortly after you were born. Kind of in the vicinity, yes, without going too much in detail, yes. <laughs> You must have been a young person, though. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's that's when I started working for myself. I had no idea what I was going to do, no idea. Okay. All yeah. I knew was, was I was never going to work for anybody ever again. And so, you know, my my wife didn't say, "Well, how are we going to earn a living?" She didn't say that. You know, she just she said, "Oh, okay." You know, and and she she never she uh, believed in you. Doubted. Yeah. I can remember. I used to be a pilot. Uh, I got my uh, my license in, in 1981 uh, as a pilot, uh, and um, uh, I remember. You know, I used to toss and turn, hard to sleep, before I you know took the family on a trip in my in our plane, and um, and and my wife would sleep just so soundly, <laughs> and uh, and and I said, I don't know how you can sleep so well. Well, and I tossed and turned all night. She says, well, I have more faith in the pilot than you do. So, which yeah. is interesting. She had more faith in me than I did in myself. So yeah. you, have to have, you have to have a supporting partner, you know, and, and my wife was very, very supporting. And she never, she never complained, ever said, well, how are we going to make a living? How are we going to provide for the family? Because she knew I would. She knew I would do whatever it took to provide for my family. And so I, I even though... Uh, you know, I didn't have anything in mind when I when I left my job in, in mid nineteen seventy six. I, I didn't say, "Oh gosh, I'm gonna I want to start this company." All I knew was is I had to figure out what I was going to do. I had to come up with my own business plan. Yeah, and and I came up with a number of business plans before the one that really stuck, which was my company, Micro well, Semiconductor, which I founded in nineteen seventy eight. Yeah, it took me a couple took me a couple of years, you know, yeah. to get to get it figured out. But I did, uh, and it, but I just keep pushing and persevering, and you know, I just never thought anything about going back to work for 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 another uh, for a company. Um, my I just committed, yeah, to to just starting my company. You know, I didn't have any bright idea, didn't have any perfect product. You know, there was no venture capital coming after me. It was just me deciding to make it a success. That that was. My my decision was to make it a success. Yeah. So there's a, there's a commercial that says, um, "How do you spell relief?" And it's R O L A I D S. Relates. You know that that was a commercial that they had. 
Uh, and so I came up with the saying, how do you spell success? And success is spelled W-O-R-K. <laughs> and, and, and that's that's all it was. was yeah. just I was just willing to do whatever it took to be successful. I never thought about not succeeding. It wasn't even, failure was not even a, even a fraction of my thought. Yeah. All, all I wanted to do was I just kept moving, I kept persevering, kept shoving ahead, you know. And, yeah. Um, that's really it's inspiring by itself but there's lots of keys in there that i'm hearing as well um having somebody else that believes in you i think is is a major thing um if you're ha actually married to them as well that's always better um but even if you're not you can bring a business partner or a confident or coach or somebody around you that will kind of hold the best parts of you up to yourself i think is probably the better way of, of putting it but also like like you touched on near the beginning as well as well about persevering and i know that that's kind of a key thing but also you made the decision you made the commitment and you didn't change from that you didn't kind of waver one way or another it's just no, this is what's going to happen i'll find a way and i think that's a really good approach that yeah we are still kind of we're all learning, we're all on a journey, and we're all finding our way. I think the path, particularly entrepreneurs amongst others, is the path changes as you go, but you just keep moving forward, don't you? So I think I think they're really key points. So let's just touch kind of from the, the CEO perspective and the longevity, because it's admirable in lots of different ways. A, you kept the company profitable, but also to be a CEO for that length of time. Um, I'm intrigued as well as perseverance and a really good faithful wife that believes in you. What would be some of the other keys that we could learn from you to keep longevity and successful longevity within our businesses and within our endeavors? Well, it's, it's so obviously if you're going to have people working for you, it's to have the right culture. Um, so when I started my company, my Krell, in 1978, the goal was not to make the company wealthy, you know, profitable, successful. That wasn't the goal. The goal was was to have an a uh, an enterprise where people could could actualize their goals as individuals. So you know, I, I looked at each employee as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, even though they were receiving a paycheck from the company, I looked at them as an entrepreneur. What is an entrepreneur? They create, they innovate, and they negotiate. That's the three things they do. Um, and so if you think of yourself, Trevor, and your, what you're doing with these podcasts, you had to create it, you innovated it, and you negotiated like you got me on the program. Okay? Every person that you hire, you treat them as an entrepreneur, and, and, and you value them. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's... It's not the company that, that's successful. It's the people that are successful. People make the company successful. And and that's the, what we did is we focused on people. Um, and so if you, our culture at, at Micrell was, number one, was honesty. That means you'll be truthful. You'll always tell the truth, no matter if it hurts. Yeah. The second is integrity. Integrity is doing what's right when no one's watching. It comes from the heart. So integrity is what 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 your heart tells you to do, not what your head, it's what your heart. Okay, and and that means you're you're not gonna you're not gonna violate those those uh, principles that you had. So uh, having integrity means you make the decision before you have to make the decision. You see, so you decide something before you have to decide it. It's too late. Once you have to decide it, it's too late. So you want to set those principles in place, saying, here's what I want. Here are the principles that I want to have, um, and, and you stick by them no matter what. Uh, no, it, no matter if it hurts you or not, okay? You have to stick by your principles. That's integrity, yeah. okay? The third is dignity and respect for every individual. So we did not allow at our company, we didn't allow any use of abusive or vulgar language. It wasn't allowed. Um, and so you you couldn't you couldn't be condescending to someone. You, you, your goal was instead of saying how are you, we'd say how can I help you. You know, it's like when we started the podcast. You wanted to know what I wanted to do, and I said I want to well I want to help you. Okay, yeah. 
So it's not how are you, it's how can I help you? And and so at our, at our company, we fostered that. And, and so people felt safe at our company. We had the lowest turnover of, of any company in our industry. And we had a lot of boomerang employees, which means half of our employees that left the company wanted to come back. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the highest uh, there was no nobody in the, the entire world had a better boomerang rate than we did yeah and and so that that told told you or, or it should sh- show you that we had the kind of culture that people enjoyed okay yeah. so that love and respect for every person was very very important even though we had thousands of people working for us that was fostered throughout the company we had, we had offices all over the world um, even uh, in in, um, in London, we had offices, uh, and so we had, you know, to treat and all these different cultures in India and 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 um, Japan, uh, Taiwan, you know, China, uh, yeah. Korea, you know, uh, of course, all over the United States, and uh, and and Europe, um, we we had uh, we have in, in Italy and in France and England. We had offices all over these these areas, yeah. And and so we had different cultures, with people with different different experiences, but we didn't look at them as oh, well, you're English or you're or, or or you're British or you're you're Japanese or you're Chinese. We looked at them as they're my Krell employees. That's how we looked at them. Okay, so that was our third culture. The fourth was do whatever it takes, no excuses. What you do is if you make a mistake, we all make mistakes. You correct it, okay. You don't put yeah. it back on the company and say, "Okay, well, the company's going to pay for it because I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm human." Well, that's that's not the point. The point is, is that you, what you do is you first acknowledge you made a mistake. You have to say that to yourself. I made a mistake. You have to admit it. Yeah. The second thing is you got to go tell somebody that you've injured, that you've made a mistake, whether it be your boss or, you know, maybe an employee or whatever. But you, you say, hey, I'm sorry, I made this mistake, okay? And then you verbalize it. And then the, then the third thing is you do is that you correct it. You you make amends. You you fix it. You know, no harm, no foul, right? In other yeah. words, if you, if you make a mistake and fix it, then there's no problem, you know? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And, and so that's that that's the key is that you, 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 you make amends. You fix it. And then the last one, fourth step is don't repeat it. Don't repeat the same stupid mistake. Okay? <laughs> Learn from that mistake. Yeah. Okay. So that so that was a culture that we had at at the company, and and people loved it. Uh, um, I, I was just talking with a fellow yesterday, uh, who was an executive at our company. His wife passed away uh, two days ago, and he called to tell me his wife had passed away, and hit. He'd been gone from our company for 10 years, okay? And and yet he uh, uh, he still felt comfortable enough to call me, let me know. And I sympathized with him because of this wise passing. And and he just said, you know, I really miss the culture of, of, of my Corella company uh, because we cared. You know, here he is. He's, he's not even working for me. I'm company's been sold. I mean, here I am, you know, 10 years later. Uh, and he's calling to tell me about his wife. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and and I thought that was good. I mean, that yeah, that speaks know. volumes, doesn't it, about how they know you appreciate them for who they are. Uh, yeah, definitely. So, what were the challenges around? Like, you had such a diverse workforce in the sense of offices in different cultures, kind of thing. How did you get over the the challenges of helping people? realize that this is the culture that we are implementing like the personal responsibility side of it because just by by human nature we don't want to admit we're wrong but if we're in a culture where it's encouraged to take personal responsibility and to put it right then it's very empowering but what we know is right we don't always go for straight away so what were some of the how did you implement a Culture. But the reason why I ask is, for the people listening, if they've got a team, whether it's spread across the world or more locally, there's going to be differences of opinions, views, perspectives. Everybody has a kind of an experience of previous employment or 
those sort of scenarios before where they maybe not have the same values. And then they want to implement the values that you say, um, which I think are very commendable. I stand by them completely. How could they start the process? Okay, so, uh, you know, with, with different languages, um, I tried to learn the language of the country. Uh, and I told, I spoke to them, and whether it be in, in, in uh, Farsi or, or, or in uh, Arabic or in Japanese or wow. Taiwanese or Tagalog or, or French or Italian or Spanish or, you know, whatever yeah. their language. I tried to speak them in, in their language. Um, and and not, not that I could be conversant, but that showed respect for them and, and their culture. Um, but the primary reason that, that we were able to get this message across is because we talked about common principles. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what your, what your, your, your background is or your culture. It's doing the tough things first. Um, and, and so we taught them that principle of eating that ugly frog every day would help them become a better person. Um, and so the first thing that I would, you know, when I do every morning, even to this very day, is I think of all the things I don't want to do, and I do them first. I learn to love the things I hate. And I taught that throughout the company. Because if you if you learn to love things you don't like doing, look, that that's discipline. Discipline is doing what you don't like doing and doing it well. Uh, yeah. And so if you can teach them to do things they don't like to do and love it, look how much better they're going to become as an individual so that's the tough things first is, is getting it getting those few items that you have on your plate every day that you would like to procrastinate but that you don't that you just you hit them head on whether you like it or not i'm going to get those done maybe it's apologizing to one of my employees maybe it's making that phone call to tell them that they're no longer going to work for the company um you know uh, maybe it's uh, some other uh, being truthful about the financials of the company, things you Joe don't you don't want to do, uh, maybe because you're embarrassed or whatever, you know. I just drum that into them that get it over with. You know, it's it's like you know if you feel sick and you got to throw up, go ahead, throw up, get rid of it. You know, uh, don't don't uh, don't hesitate. You know, don't try to keep it down. If it wants to come up, don't keep it down. You know, you know how much better you feel after you throw up. You know, I know it's not a good conversation. No, yeah. I feel better. Yeah. I feel better when, so that's doing the tough things first. Get the, get that out of your system. Get it done. You know, if, if you look at a, the, what a CEO does, 80% of what he does, he doesn't like doing. I mean, they're, they're tough things, okay? And and so if 80% of your, your job you don't like to do and you learn to love it and you learn to accept it, then you 100% of your day is, is successful. Because you don't have a problem. You don't have any difficulty tackling the tough things because you've learned to love it. And you, you say, oh, wow, I didn't know it was going to turn out that way. That's great. you know. And you just keep uh, persevering. So um, uh, Waldo Emerson, who's a poet, uh, was quoted as saying, that which we persist in doing becomes easier. Not that the nature of the task becomes easier, but our ability to perform it becomes easier. That's doing the tough things first. That's exactly what it means to love the things you hate. And and uh, Walter Emerson, I, I credit him for that. And I, I quote him all the time. I keep thinking about what he said, that which we persist in doing. You know, that becomes a good habit. Don't persist in doing bad things. Persist in doing good things. So, you know, uh, that's what we're talking about. Don't Don't develop bad habits, develop good habits. So we should say, that which we persist in doing that is good, you know, becomes easier. Not that the nature of the task changes, but our ability to perform it becomes easier. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the key. There's some wisdom in that. Definitely. Yeah. So would you say for people that are maybe listening to us and thinking, yeah, I, I know, I know, but I really struggle being disciplined. What would you say? Yeah, I think you've kind of asked it already, but what would you say yeah. to that approach? I said, do the tough things first. If you don't like doing it, do it, do it right now. You know, yeah. um, you know, I didn't like to used to make my bed, you know, <laughs> but now I do it readily. I am happy to do it. You know, I yeah. didn't like used to, didn't like used to mowing the yard or didn't like having to wash the cars or didn't like anything that was kind of 
outside my expertise as you would. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm good at it. I'm, I can make a beautiful bed. I can, I help my wife clear the table. I help cook. I mean, I help wash the clothes. I mean, I, I, yeah. I there, there's nothing that, that I won't do. You know, I mean, it's even, even when I was running the company and I, if I went into the bathroom, uh, uh, I saw paper on the floor, I'd pick it up. I'd wipe the counter. I, I clean it with my own hands. I hear I'm the CEO, president of the company, but if I saw if I, if someone forgot to flush the, the, the toilet, but I flush it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I just, I, I just become very, very amenable to just doing things that most people would not even want to do. Yeah. But that's what I like to do. I like to do that. Adversity is like manure. It stinks, but it helps us grow. You know? That's a so, good yeah. quote. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, you you know, don't don't shy away from adversity. Don't shy away from challenges. Yeah. You don't grow if if you're not trying to overcome something. You know, if you if, if if you think about it, if you have a beautiful piece of furniture in your home, you know, it started out as just a piece of wood. Yeah. Okay. It took somebody time to carve it and, and shape it, and and there's a lot of a lot of things about making furniture that that are that are nasty. I mean, the sawdust and the and just the sanding and. And, and, and that polishing and, and, and just, you know, shaping yeah. Yeah. that that's not, that's not good. I mean, you know, you'd like to sit back and look at a finished piece of furniture and you admire it. Boy, that's beautiful. Yeah. But it wasn't beautiful when it started. It was just yeah. a piece of the wood. Okay. And that's your company. You know, your company may not be beautiful when you start it, but you shape it, you sand it, you, you prepare it. You know, they, they say that 90% of anything that's beautiful began as nothing. I mean, it was it was a, a piece of canvas that was was you had to prepare as a preparation. That's that's the key to, to a beautiful painting or a beautiful art or be, if it's piano or music or anything you do, it, it all starts out kind of miserable. It doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't start out. Beautiful and wonderful, yeah. you know. When when you when you listen to a an opera or or, a, or some musical uh, rendition, you know that did, that didn't start out that way. It there's a lot of preparation that went into that, a lot of practicing, yeah, a lot of, a lot of just hours and agony, you know. Uh, you know these 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 great athletes, you know they they just they spend hours doing very mundane things, you know, like jumping squatting and jumping and weightlifting and training and, and and that that's how that that's the preparation it's not just passing the ball you know it's not just kicking the goal yeah there's a, there's a there's probably 80 or 90 percent of the time they spend is preparing for that match or that or that that sport yeah would you, wouldn't you agree yeah, yeah yeah and it's kind of as you're saying it a i'm thinking of yes that four letter word but work that you mentioned earlier is such, such a key element but also it's keeping the picture of the finished piece of furniture isn't it while you're going through the sanding the polishing all the hard work and the the messy time you keep the picture of this is what i'm going to create this is where i'm heading this is what i want to achieve um because it's already in your head you already got you've already pictured that finished piece of work yeah right? you've already you've got that focus like your company you, you you've like i did when i started my crow you know, I already had it. I had it pictured in my mind. The company turned exactly out, uh, exactly as I had pictured it. I mean, wow. no different. Okay. It, 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 yeah. when, when the day I started that company, I already had it pictured. It turned out exactly like I had pictured it, and that's 37 years later. Yeah. Wow. Well done. Congratulations. Not everyone can say that. Um, even though, you know principles work if we work them i think yeah we do fall short sometimes of getting to that but before we've got a little bit more time but we are kind of coming to the end of it but i do want to just on that vein quiz you a little bit about how do you how do you stay the visionary as the ceo in the company so you're always looking ahead to see where the company's needs to go how the market's changing what are the sort of tips just in a nutshell but what are some of the tips that helped you kind of navigate through and, and hit 36 profitable years out of 37 
Well, it takes it, it you know, it's one step at a time. You know, you have to um, you have to go from the known to the unknown and a little bit further. So because the known, of course, you can see it. I mean, it's very visible. But then you have to visualize the unknown. Okay. But you, but the unknown is not far enough. You have to go beyond the unknown. That's faith. That's see, that's faith. Faith is what it takes. It takes faith in seeing that picture already finished. The great artists of the world already have that picture in their mind. All they're doing is creating what they've already yeah, seen. Yeah. Okay. Even yeah. though it's not there, they 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 have it pictured in their head. Because that as you as you know, Trevor, thought precedes the action. Yeah. Thought precedes you. You can't do something unless it's involuntary, like a knee jerk or something. You your your mind has to think it before you can proceed. Whether it be lifting your hand, whether it be opening your mouth, you know, you know, you're, you you have to think it. Yeah. And so if if that plan or that if that um, view that that painting is not firmly fixed in your mind it's not going to turn out right you know so you, what you have to do it's just like um, someone who's a, a great pianist or a vocalist you know they, they have to think that first yeah you know, what, what, whether whether you're going to be an artist or a vocalist or a company CEO you know, you, you so a man thinketh, so he is. So a man thinketh, so he is. Yeah, that's the key. You have to it has to be thought first, and then it will return into what you want. Whether it be your own personal goal of the physical being that you want to be, um, whether it's uh, the mental individual, uh, the way you treat other people, you know, you that has to all be firmly fixed in your mind so that's the key but it comes from the heart yeah. so if your heart is right then your actions will be right okay because all your mind is going to do is follow your heart okay so you know you can you any all of us have that ability i don't care if you live in zimbabwe or if you live in london or if you live in in in, in montana you know you, you're you're gonna you, you can do it because yeah. we all have the same abilities, by the way. And, and we look at it and say, oh, man, I could never sing like that, or I could never do that painting. Well, then you're already defeated. When you tell yourself you can't do something, you won't do it. Because, yeah. again, it starts with your mind. Okay? You have to say, I can do this. I can do this. Okay? Yeah. And then you do it. You have to visualize it. If you visualize you can't do it, guess what? You won't. Yeah. Okay? So all your listeners out there, they have to believe in themselves. You know, I can't change you. You can. Yeah. You know, you know, for example, on this podcast today, I can put all this flowery stuff. I can put all these ideas, this wisdom out there, and it's just going to be hot air unless you're willing to make that change. Yeah. I can't change you, but you can. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's kind of what you touched on earlier, isn't it, about the value of taking personal responsibility? It really is like we all have some inner belief, don't we? Whether we then kind of talk ourselves out of it because we don't think we're good enough or we tried something and it didn't work, whatever the reasons and excuses we give each other, or it's a bit uncomfortable, I kind of like it here. That's another kind of common thing that we trip ourselves up with but you're right it's like the belief is within us and i suppose a lot of it is do we really have the courage to lead ourselves through the process of taking what we believe surrounding ourselves with people that will help support that belief coming into reality going through the tough stuff making the tough decisions doing the things that we don't want to do that that gets us to the finished product. I think that's the that's the roadmap in a very kind of simple way that I'm hearing you're saying with all the different things that you've shared in how we value people, how we build a team around us that feels valued because when they feel valued, 
their contribution it just it skyrockets doesn't it you've got well, you know, buying from the individuals yeah, you, know, you your 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 country uh, in england hmm. during the second world war faced tremendous hardships germany was bombing the living heck out of of, yeah. of your country okay but who was there what ceo was there to lead england out of that dilemma what was his name Churchill Winston Churchill yeah he was the CEO okay he did not envision defeat he he never did yeah he he kept he kept pumping up the citizenry of 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 England we can do this we can defeat these people you know yeah we're not going to give up you know and 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 he was a powerful powerful leader yeah. probably the greatest leader in the world during the Second World War was Winston Churchill. Yeah. And and why? Because his country was facing defeat. You know, I mean, you know, other countries like the United States came in to help, but we can only help those who are willing to help themselves. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just like I, I'm here to help if you're willing to help yourself. Yeah. Okay. You see? But you have to take responsibility. You have to take a leader like a Winston Churchill leader, and then you have to you have to be willing to accept help from others, which he did. Okay. Yeah. But but you have to help yourself. Okay. You know we can help you, but you got to be willing to help yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 so, you know, I I so much admire your country. I so much admire the leadership that that prevailed especially during those dark times of the second world war england would not exist today as a country if it weren't for the leadership under winston churchill in my mind okay? yeah and uh and so you know mike krell would not exist if it weren't for me yeah and, and my commitment to see that co company succeed i mean i i had when i started the company i had 80 or 90 percent of the people tell me i would never succeed Wow. Okay. Yeah. But but I just I said, okay, I don't care I don't care what you think. It's more important what I think. I yeah. think I will succeed. Yeah. Okay. Not that I wanted to prove them wrong. I wasn't out to prove them wrong. I was just trying to make it a success. Yeah. And it just took W O R K. It's not work, it's work. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, you can't just start off strong and end up weak. You gotta start off weak, end up strong. Okay. Yeah. So it's work. That's what it takes. And you have to be willing to put in that effort. You got to eat that ugly frog first thing every day for breakfast. It's got to be there. You got to chow it down, smile, grin, and swallow it. Yeah. But that's what you get it done. Do the tough things first. Yeah. That, that, that's if the people listening. <laughs> Ignore everything else you said. I, I wouldn't suggest they do, but if they ignore everything else you said and just take that one principle and put it into action tomorrow morning or even tonight, uh, yeah, their life can be so much different. It can transform a business, can't it? It can transform my life if I really, truly adopt that to the level that I should. Definitely, I know. There's been a couple of times where I've I've kind of done something that I really wanted to do, really needed to do at the start of the day. And there's there's such a... Oh, whatever happens now, the day's been a success. There's such a different feeling um, that you can then build on and just you know keep progressing. But like you say, you have to tackle things first. And the sense of achievement, our bodies reward us, don't they, with kind of the endorphins, the happy feelings, the happy chemicals that boost our energy and, and our well-being as well. So there are benefits um, as well as just clearing the bad stuff out of the way. The physiological side of things help, and uh, as you say, it builds tenacity it builds a resilience within us that yeah we can actually do it so yeah thank you for everything you've, you've shared we are kind of out of time on the episode today but yeah there's such wisdom in what you've said um and in your journey the way you've you've kind of led the company like you have and now you haven't retired you are still helping entrepreneurs businesses so everybody i think should get a copy of the book so is the best place to get it kind of Amazon, somewhere like that, or head straight to your site? What would be the, yeah, the either way works? Um, you know, all you got to do is look up my name. I'm, I'm on Wikipedia. 
Uh, you can look up my background there. You can go to my website, toughthingsfirst.com, and you'll find everything there that you need. Uh, you can contact me on LinkedIn, um, wherever your favorite place to go for social media. I'm on Facebook. I publish on my personal Facebook every day. I publish some, some musing, some thoughts about how you can improve your day. Um, and, um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm here to help. That's, that's my, my goal here is, is to help, help others. And I hope that I, I've done something of value today to help your, your listeners. Absolutely. And, yes. And, uh, Absolutely. I just would, would love to hear back how that's helped out in your particular audience. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm really grateful that you've taken the time to, to, to talk to me today and give me this opportunity to try to help other people. Uh, you're more than welcome, definitely. Uh, this is the sort of stuff that we need to hear. I think we we unnecessarily struggle sometimes because we don't listen to enough of the, the positive stuff. We don't learn enough from the people that have already walked the path ahead and proves that it works. And we just need to kind of get our own acts together, put personal responsibility we, we, in place. You talked about endorphins. You said that, you know, that, you know, success breeds those endorphins. Uh, that, that makes you happier, but that's using optimism as a weapon. Optimism is what stimulates the endorphins. And so you have to be optimistic. You have to believe that no matter what happens, that you're, yeah. that you're going to succeed. And there's where optimism, even though it hasn't happened yet, it's that optimism that will increase those endorphins that will make you feel better. Um, we, uh, we had a, uh, an individual called my wife yesterday uh, who, who knows us. We haven't talked to him, seen him for probably 20 years, or well, maybe not that long, maybe 15 years. And, and, and her husband is, is well, probably hmm, 20 or 30 years younger than I am, at least 30 years. And, and he's kind of running out of gas. He just, he's the one, by the way, that that's in, as, does all the, the, the scientific experiments with DNA. He's a DNA He's probably huh. the world's most renowned DNA expert. And and he and his wife wants to help him. And she called and says, How do you do it? How do you keep going? How do you even here you're 30 years older than my husband, but you're you're going like 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 you were 20 years old. And and uh, she, she thought I was on some vitamins or something. She thought there was some, you know, chemical that was was doing it. And I said, No, it's the endorphins, you know, it's a it's that optimism, it's that belief that I can still be productive even in my 80s. I'm in my 80s. Okay, would you believe that? I'm in my 80s. I wouldn't. I'm still productive. No, I wouldn't. I, you know, I, I'm just, I, I'm not going to give up. You know, I'm, not, I'm just going to be like that, like that Timex watch, you know, take a licking and keep on ticking. That's what I'm doing. And uh, I have challenges to face. People we do every day. I get different things that I've got to take care of. But, you know, I'm just like the Timex watch. Keep a listen and keep on it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Optimism, use it as a weapon. Get those endorphins flowing. Okay. Be optimistic. Be a believer. Yeah. Believe in yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Believe in yourself. Keep the picture that of the thing that you want to achieve, where you want to go. Keep, whatever happens, just keep that as the, the focus, the north star that navigates you navigate towards. So exactly. brilliant. Thank, thank you, Ray. Thank you for taking time to share with us golden nuggets of wisdom there and a lot of practical stuff that we can put into practice straight away. So it's been great having you on the show and for everybody listening as well, definitely get hold of tough things first. If you head to his website, as he said, the podcast is also on there. It's available on podcast platforms as well, but you can listen to it straight from the site as well. I was listening to it earlier, so I know that's how you can do it. And yes, put into practice the things that we've been talking about. You'll benefit, your business will benefit, and those around you will benefit. Your staff, your team will benefit as well, and your family. So, yeah, there isn't a downside to it other than the, the initial little hurdle of deciding I'm going to do the tough stuff first. I think that's the key. So thank you. We're going to sign off this episode for now, but there's lots that you can put into practice and learn and be proactive about. So I would encourage you to do that. Thanks again, Ray. Appreciate your time. This? Yeah. I'd like to see you. Cheers, mate. Absolutely. I like that. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Well, we'll catch everyone on the next episode. Thanks very much. Bye for now.
Thank you for listening to Ukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.ukibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com.